Okay, so I'm going to read the section where Daisy first steps through the door into the green wild. And she's being chased in this scene by a man called Mr. Craven, who has something to do with her mother's disappearance. Now Craven is after Daisy too. She knows that she needs to escape. Okay, Daisy could hear Craven at the entrance to the glass house. The door seemed to be jammed and he was arguing with the man beside him. Daisy glanced round and pushed after Napoleon. Napoleon is the cat. Even as she ducked through the curtain of vines, she heard glass shattering as Craven broke his way into the palm house. Watch the exits, he said. His voice was harsh and she saw him draw close to her hiding place. She must be in here somewhere. Daisy's breath felt stapled to the back of her throat. Her fear was so strong she was surprised Craven couldn't smell it like a bloodhound. Here, girl, said Craven. Come out now. We won't hurt you. Yeah, right, thought Daisy. Her back was pressed against a large tree and she crouched down to make herself smaller. And then she saw it, a small door in the heart of the leaves. It was low and gleamed with silver light around its edges. The handle of the door was cool and silver and it turned soundlessly like something in a black and white film. Napoleon leapt across the threshold just as Craven drew closer once again. Daisy hesitated, then followed, shutting the door silently behind her. Immediately, all noises stopped. Ahead of them was a forest of towering oak trees surrounded by thorny roses. It was dim in the forest and round lanterns were strung between the trees, scattering gold sequins of light across a narrow and winding path. Napoleon was poised just ahead, looking back as if to say, hurry up then. The roses were the size of dinner plates and plumed birds, electric blue and yellow and rainbow colored, glided from branch to branch. One thing was certain, they were no longer in Kew Gardens or not in any part of it that Daisy knew.